What do I think about Natalie? Well, I can't really say, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's actually been amazing. My uh, little girls are out, and her little girls are out. They've been out the whole time. And uh, so when they were out without my girls not being here, I was actually kind of uh, feeling a little bit of that void of Daddy not having his little babies with him. But um, I love the fact that knowing I go after Natalie is that she's led people in the presence of the Lord. I mean, I, I, her voice is for, <laughs> phenomenal, first of all. I even asked her the other day, who is your vocal teacher? Because your voice is like, I don't never had one. I was like, oh, great. So what am I going to do now? Um, but she loves the Lord with all of her heart, and it's very evident. And when she sings worship, whew, and she brings people in the presence of the Lord, and uh, she's a very sweet spirit. So I'm very just stoked. This, this has been a very uh, encouraging tour. I feel like that everyone has the same heart, everyone that really has the same desire to see people worship the Lord more. And so that's why we're here. I had met Jeremy a few times before we came on tour, and he's just, um, he's a guy that's really easy to like, because um, he just comes off really fun, but I didn't know him well. Um, and I think that um, coming out on tour with him um, has been great, especially because this last part of the tour he's brought out his wife and daughters. And so, for me who has my daughters on the tour the whole time, it's great that they have at least two new little friends, which has been amazing. And I think just to see him kind of as a family guy and to see um, how committed he is to his family, is um, it, it's really cool to see. Um, and it's kind of sad, but you don't see that all the time. And so I think just to know how committed he is to his family is awesome. And it, he's for him, this is more than just kind of music and a tour. He's got a real heart for ministry, and um, I think for me that's really important um, because that's that's what we do. And it's not not everybody has to do it that way. I'm not saying that, but it's what I'm called to do. And so to be able to be on somebody's tour who really has a, a heart and a mindset for ministry um, has been a real privilege. Um, and it's it's cool to see that that's such um, and such of such high importance to him. So what's it like being on tour uh, with this group of guys and people here our bus is really like a family like it's not like um, a job I don't think really for any of us it's it's really a family and it's probably like that for most people who tour just because you're in really close quarters um, but for me it really is because I tour with my little girls and so they inherited like a bunch of aunts and uncles which is really cool I don't know that they all love maybe them waking them up at like 7 30 in the morning <laughs> But they've been pretty cool about it. But, um, yeah, we're a really close family. One of my most favorite things about Richie is um, that he's always <laughs> laughing and he's always smiling. I don't know that I've really ever seen him truly in a bad mood. And so I always say everybody needs a Richie in their life because he just makes life better. One of the funniest things to me about him is that um, when he's on the phone, he will speak half the time in Spanish and half the time in English. So he'll be like, hey man, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, well anyway, I was going to the it's like, like this constant, it's the Richie language. Um, but I got to know him, um, he was playing at a local church in Franklin, Tennessee that we, um, my husband and I had been going to called Strong Tower. And um, my husband Bernie heard him play one Sunday and was like, holy cow. And then that was back when I wasn't taking a band out a lot, um, but he's been with me the longest of anybody in my crew, a little over five years. And um, talk about family, he really is, he really is family. And I couldn't imagine doing this um, without him. Um, you recording? Yeah, dude. We'll, oh, we're just gonna, <laughs> dude, we're just gonna shoot. <laughs> it's the red light in the action. No, it's none of that. <laughs> No, 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 no direction. Just uh, go. Action! <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Grant. I am her drummer, Richie Pena, and also her, her number one fan. I've been uh, with Natalie for five years. Long time. Long time. I met her uh, with her husband, and the funniest thing was I got hired for a gig, and I thought it was going to be the only one. So I got a t-shirt signed by her. <laughs> with this great little shot of short hair and I made her sign to Richie, it was great. Four years later, I got on a plane and I wore that shirt. <laughs>
That's how it was. It was so awkward. She was sitting next to me and the stewardess was coming by. And I told her, I was like, man, it's so hot in here. I was like, uh, is it right? She said, no, it should be, you know, we should be fine. So all of a sudden I take off my shirt. And when I take off my shirt, the first thing you see is Nellie Grant's face right on me, signed, and then her sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so every time the stewardess would pass by, she would be like, is that her? Like, yeah, that's her. <laughs> You are number one fan. Yeah, I'm number one fan, number one fan. But she's great. She's I've seen her throughout uh, many things, many changes, and I love hanging with her. She's a great person. Uh, she's like my older little sister. She's a little older than me, just by a little bit, not by much. And uh, she's great, man. Good hang. She can sing her booty off. Can I say that? <laughs> Is that... Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's good. Everything good. You know, the only problem she has now is she doesn't have much time to shower as much as she used to. <laughs> Other than that, you know, on a good day, she's. Why is that? Two beautiful little girls who are a handful. And I love those girls. They're the best. Gracie and Bella. They keep us all busy all day long. Man, on stage, all we do is mainly follow her. It's night after night something different and we all just go with the flow and she'll stare at us and do something and we'll have to reply or you know but it's always great great dynamic um, it starts out real fun and it has the serious moments and and it's a chi uh, life-changing experience for everyone always 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 and of course I got my man leave covering me when I'm gone rock on leave and uh, man, it's a good family. I love Evan, Tiff, uh, Donnie's now out with us, Walt. Love all the guys, man. Always a good time. The only thing I can say is I love you, Nat. You kill, and yeah, you're my sister, and life will never be the same after being with you. Kill it. Okay, Tiffany, first of all, has the craziest middle name. It's like, Eliki Liki Mukaleka And um, I actually could not remotely recite her middle name, and I hope that you get her to recite it because it's <coughs> quite remarkable. My legal name is Tiffany Kananimai Ole Ona Laniki Iki Eloa Thurston. Um, I met Tiffany when she was like 17 years old. Um, um, and she uh, was singing in this, no, maybe you're 19. I don't know how old she was, anyway. She was singing in this youth choir. I actually snuck into a sound check <laughs> that she was sound checking at. You had heard of her? And I had heard of her, but never heard her. And I was in the youth choir that was like the opening opening act. And um, my mom's like, there's this gal that's supposed to be really awesome singing tonight. And so I snuck into the sound check and I was blown away. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> If someone with that kind of voice can sing for God, I totally want to sing for the Lord. Um, I'd gone on tour to Hawaii, and um, the, the church in Hawaii is this ginormous church. And um, ginormous, I think it's my own word. But, um, she was singing with them, and I just remember going, oh my word, that girl can sing. But it, her talent is extremely obvious, because she's got such a great voice. But I think it was her heart and her spirit that immediately, when you meet Tiffany, you just, you feel like you've known her kind of your whole life. And she, um, I don't mean to sound kind of religious about it, but she really shines the love of the Lord. And it's kind of very apparent, like the minute you meet her, you know this girl loves Jesus, because it's just really pretty evident um, in her life. About three years ago, um, I ran into her at another conference, because I'd see her at different things. And it was in Nashville for three May week. It had been years since I'd seen her, but she'd come to like different gospel music association events, and I'd see her kind of around the country. I remember seeing her like in DC for some GMA event. I saw her in Nashville, and I hadn't seen her in a few years, and I was like, Tiffany! And I've never heard God speak audibly, but it was like I knew that this girl was supposed to be in my life. And um, I was on tour with something called the Revolve Tour. It's this conference for teenage girls, and they were looking for a worship leader. And I just knew that it was Tiffany. And long story short, she called me a week later out of the blue and just said, Hey, Tiffany, this is Natalie. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and, um, she said, You've just been on my heart.
part for this last week, and I don't know what you've been up to, but I think you'd be really great for this teenage girl conference that we're doing in the fall, and it's just in the spring, which is called, so that I can't guarantee you a job, but I'd love to put your name in and see if you have anything of you leading worship. In our church, had just done a worship album, which I had done like a lot of the songs on, and so I sent that into her, and um, three months, four months had passed, and I thought they probably found somebody, and a month before the whole thing went down, um, I got a call, and it was the Revolve Tour, which was a part of Women in Faith, and um, they ended up hiring me. Um, and so they're like, would you mind moving from Hawaii because we can't fly every weekend from there? And I'm like, totally. So I, I chose Nashville, and the last weekend I was in Hawaii, I, our church was doing this big celebration, and um, they always would bring in an artist. And it just so happened the artist that they had chosen to bring in that year was Natalie Grant. And so I just kind of fell in the room. Zach, last weekend I was there in Hawaii before the Revolve Tour, which Natalie would be a part of. And we tried out a song that we were going to do at the tour, and she hired me that weekend. So I thought it would just be like a six month stand before the Revolve with Natalie in between, and it's been two years, so it's kind of crazy. I just knew, and I'm like, I know you live in Hawaii, but would you ever consider doing this? And she was like, absolutely. And I'm like, would you be a gypsy with me? <laughs> she was like, absolutely. And she's been with us ever since. <laughs> so That's great. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> Evan had met my husband somewhere and they had done like um they did some event and and bernie had hired him to play and so we kind of had heard you know that i knew he was great bernie had heard him play but i didn't really know him and i think that's the hard thing is because we have such a chemistry as a family out here it's like how is this person going to kind of just mesh and you don't want them to feel like they're on the outside but he has totally just like fallen right into place he, he's a piece of work <laughs> in his bright red jeans and his funky glasses, but he's a fantastic player and is a brother, you know, and, and that has been really cool to see how he's just become part of the family. My daughters love him. I like playing with Natalie a lot. I think she's really amazing vocalist. She's a really good employer. She likes to take care of us in the road. They're all great things, and they make touring fun. Our bus is red. We call it Clifford, the big red bus. I don't know if you've ever seen um, the movie Sleepless in Seattle, um, and if you remember Walter, but Walter just had issues. Like, he always had a box of Kleenex by the bed, and he was always kind of like had an allergy. I think he possibly slept with an air purifier kind of a thing. And I'm sorry, Evan, but you're slightly Walter. Um, that's kind of my nickname for you because um, he always has to like have Afrin and Kleenex and chapstick, and he brings his own sheets and pillow. And um, Walter, we call him Walter. <laughs> so he's real trusting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sorry, Evan, <laughs> but we love you. You're amazing. <laughs> So, like, um, I got to share part of Jeremy's band, which has been really cool, um, because my bass player and my guitar player stayed with the Revolve Tour this fall, and so I was without a bass player, without a piano player, um, and without a guitar player, so we got Evan, my husband Bernie had been playing keys for me, and he was staying in town, and um, so it worked out perfect to be, first of all, thank you, Jeremy, for loaning me part of your band. And thank you, Walt and Donnie, for playing with me. Um, because, again, it's kind of like this chemistry thing. You don't really know, kind of, when you've never played with somebody before. Um, Walt is, like, this amazing servant. Like, he's got an incredible servant heart. And he would do things for us. Like, he would print off our set list every night. We never asked him to. But he would, like, type up our set list, type up the city we're in. And he's just, like... He's a really amazing guy, um, and he went above and beyond just playing bass for us. And you can just tell a lot about a person by their, their heart in that way. Johnny is awesome. He's got this really teachable spirit and um, been a really cool guy to get to know. And um, also being able to meet his girlfriend, he's really sweet. And um, yeah, he's just he's a really good guy. And both of them bring a really sweet. Um, kind of servant kind of attitude to the platform, which is pretty cool. And then um, 
I've had this really cool dude that's like played drums for me a couple times and um, sometimes my drummer likes to go off and be a rock star and he plays for Babyface and like I don't know why he would want to do that <laughs> but um, he would g go off and play for Babyface and Jeremy's drummer like he was like well Jeremy's drummer's gonna fill in and we never had a rehearsal um, this has nothing to do with the fact that that same guy is actually holding the camera right this minute but, um, <laughs> just kidding. So, I'm kind of like, okay, I know he's a good drummer and all, but we're about to do like eight songs, a 45 minute set, and we've never even had a rehearsal. And, um, leave your doll, bro. Like, amazing. amazing. So, it's been pretty cool. Like, I've had the opportunity to play with some pretty top notch musicians, and they also have just turned out to be really cool guys.